Dr. Virin Sroop Institute of Computer Studies. Welcoming you all in today's webinar, Career Prospectus, Challenges and Skills Needed for Students Amid and Post-COVID-19. Dr. Virin Sroop Educational Foundation is one of the oldest educational societies in Northern India. With 22 years of its establishment of professional institutes, it is profoundly shaping lives and careers of around 4,500 students every year. Visix is renowned name in the field of professional degree courses in Kanpur. Through the undergraduate and postgraduate programs in computer and management field, it is continuously setting benchmarks. RBCA, BBA, MCA and MBA courses are effectively blended with varied inputs to build a strong and skilled youth. Over the period, we have been organizing various forums and deliberations to ensure our students get every insight from the erudite and experienced personalities across to guide and show them the right approach towards the various facets of their lives. The pandemic that has shattered economies around the world has also bettered education system. While each level of education faces its unique challenges, it is the higher education segment that may end up triggering a learning revolution. COVID-19 has created worldwide panic, but at the same time has offered newer ways of looking at the things to the mankind, particularly with respect to environment and nature around us. So today, Virin Sroop Institute of Computer Studies have a webinar that focuses on challenges in higher education in present scenario, online teaching and its relevance for promoting innovation in recruitment process to improve the quality of higher education. We feel elated to welcome our chief guest, Professor Shalene Kulkarni, Higher Education Advisor, Government of Nagaland, our chief guest, Professor Abhay Kumar, Vice Chancellor, IEC University, Himachal Pradesh, our keynote speaker, Dr. W. C. Singh, Registrar, Manipur University, our guest speaker, Dr. Mohammad Anis, Senior Assistant Professor, Lucknow University, and team talk by Dr. Sandeep Shandelia, Director, Academic, Banjara. I am pleased to have the opportunity to introduce our Chief Guest, Professor Dr. Shailene Kulkarni. He is Advisor in Ministry of Higher and Technical Education, Government of Nagaland, India. He is the youngest Vice Chancellor of a university in India. He also happens to be the youngest Director of a Technical Institute. He was awarded Commemorative Medal of Honor, Hallmark 2000, by American Biographical Institute, USA, for exceptional professional accomplishments. Recently, he has been appointed as Vice President by prestigious International Accreditation Organization, Texas, USA. So without further ado, I present before you all our Chief Guest, Professor S. N. Kulkarni. Welcome, sir. Sir, please. Uh, sir. Okay, I can hear you. <coughs> can you hear me? Yes, Professor Kulkani, we can hear you. A very good morning. Very good morning, Jayin to everyone. I guess technical glitches will come in. Now I am delighted to introduce our next chief guest, Professor Dr. Abhay Kumar. He is presently Vice Chancellor at IEC University, Badli. He has acquired his PhD degree from Department of Business Management, Garhwal University. Apart from being Dean and Director in his various assignments, he is a member of numerous bodies related to higher education. 
I welcome you, sir, with greatest reverence and highest admiration. Welcome, Dr. Abhay, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. So, uh, I think, uh, would we wait for Professor Kulkani to set his uh, mic or what to do? Tell me. Uh, I think I can hear you guys. Can you people yeah, hear yeah, me? Yeah, Professor Kulkani. Yes, sir, we can hear yes, you, sir. Yes, we can hear you now. Oh. All right. Uh, I missed I missed the first part completely so uh, now here I am can you hear me I can hear you now yes thank you thank you please professor Kulkarni sir please start the session welcome sir uh jahil to everybody uh, what a what a delight and what an honor to have uh, professor abhay kumar as well here with us yeah. um, um himachal uh, i hope uh, is is doing well now yes sir. Uh, after 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 uh, what happened with the covid and it's such a such a such a wonderful thing to you know be over here i wonder if uh, professor singh is here from manipur university as well Yes. Yeah, yes. Right, right. Welcome to you, sir, uh, from uh, Thank you. the northeast corner. Uh, Imphal again is, I guess, beautiful. In fact, lot of lot of time I fly into Imphal since I'm working in Kohima now. Oh so, yeah, I have seen your profile and it's really yeah, nice yeah, so it's to meet you again. Pleasure, pleasure, Dr. Singh, and uh, also Chandilya as well, Sandeep Chandilya, sir. Uh, if you are there, uh, Professor Shandilya has been uh, a pillar of strength uh, in one of my universities. Um, yeah. You know, a wonderful, wonderful asset. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Ranu, as well, to invite me, for inviting me. Uh, a very relevant topic, a very relevant subject for all of us, actually. Um, and everybody, in fact, um, <clears throat> last two, two and a half months, I guess, Everybody amongst us Coding is actually today. talking about it, feeling it, trying to understand what needs to be done. And we are trying to, uh, youngsters as well, try to figure out uh, what best we can do um, in these uh, testing times. But one thing is absolutely certain, uh, uh, you know, difficulties always bring opportunities. Uh, uh, we have uh, some stalwarts over here who will obviously speak about it. but. Uh, uh, more than anything else, I think uh, uh, what needs to be understood is uh, the opportunities have not gone down. If you ask me, the opportunities have been realigned. The opportunities have been, um, uh, so as to say, they have been set on a different path. Our mindsets have been uh, set on a different path. But opportunities definitely exist. There is a silver lining. There is a there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Definitely. No doubt about it. Uh, we just need to redo our thinking. We need to just re-engineer ourselves. We need to understand that life is not lost if we are not stepping out. We are still doing most of the things. The Prime Minister is still running the country. The um, the Vice Chancellor uh, Abhay sir is still running his university. Uh, doctors are running their uh, clinics. We, we in fact have uh, uh, you know, online uh, prescriptions and online consultations. Architects are working. Chartered accountants are working. Uh, chartered accountants never stop working, by the way. Uh, they always look forward to uh, do something with our money. So they will not stop working anyways. Uh, we all have found a way out to fight this pandemic. What really needs to be understood is the students and their mentors, their faculty members, the, the, the teachers, the directors, the deans, the vice chancellors, uh, education um, administrators, um, you know, education ministers, everybody need to understand it is a very positive change that has happened now. A whole lot of new opportunities, especially in the field of information technology, especially in the field of computer science, have opened up, have emerged. We always, you know, I mean, I mean, this seminar, this, this webinar uh, would have been a face-to-face -face affair um, 
uh, you know and um, of course uh, 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 in in the most of the traditional way we would have uh, sort of um, been together on a dais and you know there would have been garlands and welcome speeches and mementos so aap uh, dekhiye uh, professor abhay um, कॉलेज का भी कितना खर्चा बच गया इनको हमको चाय नहीं पिलानी पड़ी इनको <laughs> है ना दे डिड नॉट हैव टू गिव अस अ मोमेंट एंड हियर इज वेयर द क्रक्स लाइज यस्टरडे सर एंड फॉर ऑल द पीपल आई वाज डूइंग अ वेबिनार विद वन ऑफ द यूनियन मिनिस्टर्स इनफैक्ट आई वाज ऑन अ जूम मीटिंग विद हिम एंड वी वर थिंकिंग ऑफ दैट इनफैक्ट वी वर इनफैक्ट ही वाज टेलिंग मी that even the ministry some of the better um, the better equipped ministers have started working on this that instead of calling people to their office they are doing a video conferencing they are doing a vc it is called vc now i mean that's the in thing of course so uh, they will do a vc and the minister was telling me i used to finish two tasks in a day i don't believe that but anyway he said i used to finish two tasks in a day now i am able to talk to at least 10 people in a day and i'm i'm able to work on 10 tasks at a, uh, in a day so what has happened what has happened is our efficiency has increased we the people from computer engineering background we have been requesting people not to waste time in meeting physically and 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 we've been requesting people to use these means to um, uh, you know get the things done but that did not happen that did not happen the way we wanted we we uh the maximum that we did was we started smart boards in the classrooms we occasionally did a um um a video conferencing here and there but now it has become a way of life and yes trust me it has improved efficiency uh, there, 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 there there is a flip side as well i agree completely um you know um, our our physical movements have been restricted there would be health issues that would be coming in but then again um you know there are two sides of a coin so the way i look at it the youngsters who are going to pass out now and in the next 3 years the opportunities are huge absolutely huge we are going to need new kind of uh, content can i can i ask the administrator to mute some of these people can you mute everybody please i'm proud ki logo ko kain aaj zara hi thank you so uh, and 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 please don't worry administrators uh, you know these technical glitches will keep on coming in the best is to go ahead with this believe you me professor abhay is here he knows there have been times in our lives when we have been giving a presentation perhaps to the chief minister and the technical glitch happened the powerpoint just won't run isn't it professor abhay that happens yes yes sir i do agree professor so, kurgan it has happened <laughs> yeah so that happens that is fine absolutely fine i mean uh, let's take it in the stride and move ahead i as i said these youngsters need to work on certain things we need to work on data mining we need to we need to work specifically on data sciences the artificial intelligence new type of content has to come in now which means there is a lot of scope for graphic designers there is a lot of scope for those who can play around with corels and and photoshops and you know all all the adobe um, products so as to say there 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 is something new that has come up for um, the erps there is something new that has come up for app developers everybody everything needs an app today morning i did not have um, um, uh, my 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 people coming in so i i i ordered a, ch a chai from chaios using an app now everything everything in our our life is into apps so like i said we just need to realign ourselves realign our thought processes opportunities are huge tell your children in the in in your college in your um, universities to focus on certain things this is not the time this is not the time um where we want to be a jack of all and master of none no pick up your area if you come from a computer science background decide i want to go into um database management system dbms i want to do um, you know artificial intelligence i want to do um, uh, uh, an artificial neural network i you know we there, there we we need to understand that at this moment in time the focus has to be absolutely strong it has to be complete we need to 
focus on industry specific applications um, i think more to come um, uh, you know there is a there is a group of stalwarts who are over here who would be talking about a lot of things um, um i think i guess we all will be available for question and answer sessions definitely for the students um thank you very much for allowing me to open the session and for these opening remarks uh, thanks for listening out uh, patiently this is one of the plus points of the technology um you know if i was on the stage and speaking for so long i i may have uh, heard few of you hooting um you know i a good thing about technology is nobody can do anything when i am speaking and the best part is you cannot ask me to stop even so you know i'm going to do that now thank you very much jai hind thank you sir for your valuable words and enlightening speech now i want to welcome dr abhay kumar sir with greatest reverence and highest admirations please abhay sir yeah uh, ma'am i can hear you uh, in fact a very good morning to a very all good of you morning, present sir. here uh, professor kulkarni uh, whom i have uh, somehow missed meeting even while he was a vc of a university and i had gone but sir virtual meeting today we have uh, dr singh from manipur dr anish from lucknow and my worthy colleague dr sandeep shandelya who is here i have seen him uh, dr ranu chobe uh, i am very thankful to you for having invited me madam shweta shukla who is probably in the convener of this uh, uh, webinar today in fact you have given me the opportunity to come back to my hometown though virtually so uh, it is a wonderful privilege for me here today uh, in fact uh, the topic in itself is very interesting when we talk of covid 19 i must say that it has compelled uh, organizations all over the world to start thinking out of the box and looking at the current scenario we have to somehow evolve and adapt ourselves to the changing dynamics of the education industry so what are the basic skills needed i'll just come straight to the point and what are the uh, career prospects Uh, in fact uh, covid 19 has caused uh, uh, a disruption in terms of technology we all know initially all the universities uh, all the institutes and all the colleges somehow scrambled to start teaching even we did so we didn't have an lms at that point of time to be very honest we never thought that it would be completely online it would be partly online we had just started with it so what happened was ki somehow by uploading videos by Uh, uploading uh, say course materials on the websites by sending emails having whatsapp groups this is how it all started with us at iic university especially now we have a well laid down platform on which even online exams are being conducted so technology as a disruption is here to stay we all know that and it is not going to be easy because you know uh, we have uh, say problems of accessibility connectivity all those things have been talked about Uh, even adaptability by the senior faculty members in terms of uh, technology because teaching in a classroom is very different from teaching on a virtual medium i must say so because the content that has to be provided on a virtual medium on online teaching is uh, quite different it includes uh, say the uh, the attention span must be somehow articulated from the students uh you know there's a data that uh, the attention span in the last 10 years has dropped from 16 seconds to 7 or 8 seconds just imagine so we have to be very precise in what we teach in online teaching now what are the skills needed basically i'll come to skills first and career prospects later the skills if we talk of talk of life skills for instance we'll come into technology later on the life skills that are needed right now is adaptability say resilience uh Uh, communication collaboration empathy emotional intelligence and even navigating across the demographic boundaries because the world now is one corona virus has not chosen either a as a country or a creed or a caste or a religion or a color it is universal for all the way it is affecting so we have to understand that these are the basic life skills that have been taught by the have to be taught by the faculty members to the students now apart from these life skills when we come to technology we see that data literacy is the fuel for the ir4 industrial revolution 4 and therefore education 4 when we talk of education 4 i think data literacy is here to stay and there is nothing and she cannot do about it everything is coming on cloud now as professor kulkarni said so what whom would be needing we would be needing cloud architects we would be needing cloud admin as a it admins 
when we come to digital literacy for example we would be needing so many people in these things like uh, say search engine optimization experts email marketing experts there are there's a vast plethora of jobs which are open i'll tell you uh, in fact it is well said uh, that uh, uh, maybe corona uh, corona virus crisis has opened the gates for uh, say great challenges but then the opportunities are immense this is what has to be understood what we have to see in this is very clearly the fact that uh, uh, when we talk about statistics we have to understand the enormity of the situation also for india as a country you know when we talk only of higher education institutions not about schools for instance we have at least 1000 universities 40000 colleges and institutes in the country and this statistics was given by the honorable minister for mhrd nishank ji once um, during a speech we have uh, say about 14 lakh faculty members in these colleges and institutes and universities and 3.74 crore students to whom we have to cater to now for the final year students the problem right now is that uh, as far as uh, employment is concerned some job offers have been withdrawn not only in say young universities like ours at iic university but even in iits and iims so what is the basic solution to it now solution for other batches would be that we have to foster entrepreneurship and that is one thing which has to be kept in mind in the times to come that this pandemic would actually force people to become entrepreneurs if not voluntarily then they have got those capabilities and in this the role of the universities the colleges the institutes the faculty members would be enormous we have to have incubations incub incubation cells now these incubation cells would be in fact nurturing and um, budding entrepreneurs to come up then we have say uh, say accelerators who would be helping them in terms of acceleration angel investors so entrepreneurship in my opinion in the times to come india will see an explosive growth in terms of entrepreneurial activities in the next 2 3 4 years time and as we see that after every economic recession whether it was the 2008 9 recession whether it was any other economic recession post a recession always we we see that new entrepreneurs come up and they come up with a bang and they are here to stay and therefore i as an academician and expecting i think professor kulkarni would agree with me that in the years to come entrepreneurial activity is going to increase to a level which we have not thought of even now so this is one aspect the other is that email marketing experts you know branding is to be done by every organization so email marketing experts digital marketing experts even cyber security as a architects we are being challenged in terms of our security even we have just recently been warned by the government of india that cyber attacks are due please be wary when opening your emails also so the point of action now would be that we have to be very wary of these cyber attacks because our information which are vital to the country to our own selves should not go into wrong hands so what whom would be needing we would be needing cyber security experts those people ethical hackers so these are various uh, say uh, situations in which uh, say uh, jobs would be available now uh, i think that uh, leadership would be a very important skill in the times to come uh, who, who who what sort of a leader should that individual be and leadership would not always be at the top mind my words i think during a webinar or during an online teaching even middle level managers middle level faculty members and hods are leaders these days it is not only the deans or the vice chancellors who will be leaders because in face to face teaching classroom teaching the the uh, the things are different when leadership was different so what will happen now is that um, every leader should have certain qualities and try to embed these qualities from now i would just exhort the students to understand this one is the most important i feel is emotional intelligence that is one subject which i personally am thinking of introducing as a part of the course curriculum in my university you know gamification is also there where we can teach students 
by the by this methodology by this pedagogy but then i think a blend of gamification with emotional intelligence is there everywhere emotional intelligence is required the emotional quotient why and what is emotional intelligence let's understand in just two or three sentences how to make use understand your own emotions and try to understand the emotions of the other person in front of you how, what to do to relieve stress to uh, say uh, reduce conflicts and to create a harmony now in this context the qualities i think the skills i think that is become very important in emotional intelligence is as teachers we have to teach the students and the students have to imbibe within themselves that what are the various say um, uh, uh, emotions we have and how to strategize to control those emotions then how to have empathy and the most important aspect of emotional intelligence would be how to accept delayed gratification i think that is one point which we miss every time when we talk to you. i'll give you an example of uh, uh, say walter michel who was uh, a psychologist in stanford university uh, say way back about uh, 40 50 years or more back uh, there was an introduction of a marshmallow test if uh, some management experts would remember that uh, in which a faculty member would go into the class and uh, uh, give a task to the students and say that here's one marshmallow you either eat it right now or wait for about 20 minutes when i come back i'll give you two now there was a video recording going on and when the video recording showed that there were some students who would eat the marshmallow immediately and others who would wait and be patient enough for a delayed gratification when the teachers would come back now what what importance does this uh, portray this portrays the importance that those who believed in delayed gratification to some extent i am not saying wait for in infinite period that delayed gratification quality would make them persevere and be resilient in facing problems in life and the success would be permanent it would not be a, a success of a few years and then again again as a failure it was not be like that so emotional intelligence and of course indian traditional knowledge there are so many things when we talk about qualities when we talk about career prospects career prospects in yoga in ayurveda uh, even in pharmacy we have seen a boom in the pharmaceutical industry don't you see that there are so many uh, industries especially where the university is located where i am the vice chancellor ic university baddi is the biggest pharma hub in asia and when i meet the managing director i feel that they are working over time to produce uh even uh, say uh, all those medicines which are required by the united states by the president were sent most hydro hydroxychloroquine i think they were sent majorly from baddi manufactured by most of the industries here so uh, when we talk about uh, what to do in the times to come i think uh, if you remember raj kapoor's movies the show must go on we should never stop uh, at any point of time in our lives we must be very strong and resilient and we have to face this pandemic and every time i tell you when a pandemic may come when a uh, say recession may come every time india has bounced back stronger the world has bounced back stronger and i am sure that in the times to come in the future we as indians would always believe in make in india and just to give you a small example i hope my time is not being um, surpassed otherwise point a finger at me uh, in bilwada for example i'll give an example that some of the textile mills were being closed the textile mills were getting closed but one of the say owners of the textile mill decided to start producing pp kits instead of the traditional uh, say clothings now when one started many others opened up what happened then was that a spree of uh, say textile mills started manufacturing pp kits and right now over 4.5 lakh pp kits are produced every day in india when it was zero when it was zero initially in fact i was also attending a webinar in which one of my colleagues the secretary textiles was there and from zero they have come to 4.5 now uh, uh, can i use five more minutes madam yes sir yes sir sure okay 
I'll give you what our honorable prime minister thinks. Just in five minutes time. Uh, he had made a LinkedIn post. If some of you might have gone through it, vowels of a new normal. He gave five vowels, which he said are going to become the new normals in the years to come when the pandemic ends, when the students come back to the classes, when the industries reopen, when life becomes normal. That is the five vowels which are very important to English language and these would be important for the career of the students, for the career growth of, of the universities, of the institutes, of the institutions. A E I O U. One is adaptability. We have to adapt and be resilient as I have said. We shouldn't be a part of the growth curve as you said. We have to be at the top of the growth curve globally. So we have to make in India, we have to decide that every individual has to contribute. After A, it is E, efficiency. Not till now, I think mostly we have just efficiency in terms of the number of hours we have put together. Stop doing this. Let's measure efficiency and effectiveness by the productivity. What is being actually produced? What is being actually done? Let's measure it by that, especially since things have become online and teaching is now online and it is there to stay even the next semester I must say. Therefore efficiency has to be judged differently by the learnings of the students and not by what we have imparted to them. What they have actually uh, imbibed and inculcated within themselves. Then we come to I, inclusivity. Now we have always thought of ourselves individually when everything was good. But don't you find that in the past few months even distant friends and relatives whom we had not talked to in the past 20, 30 years have called us and we have been become closer to each other. Even family members who didn't even used to meet for two or three days altogether are there and have a better relationship. Now inclusivity also would mean taking uh, say cognizance of the have nots whom sometimes we feel that they we don't care for them. But don't you think this time, especially in terms of the migrant laborers, and in terms of, say, those micro entrepreneurs who didn't have anything to eat, everyone has come up. Organizations have come up, individuals have come up to help them. Then we have to have empathy. I'll give you a small example what empathy can be. Uh, just before the lockdown started, say, on the 17th of uh, say March or so, say, about some of our students of the IIC University uh, School of Pharmacy, they came up to me and said, Ki, sir, we have to educate the people around us with what COVID-19 is because it has become a global pandemic pandemic, and it sooner or later it has got to come to our country in a big way. This is they assessed. So they manufactured 100 liters of sanitizers in the lab and distributed them to each of the you know, say, villages around and in fact taught them and say made them aware about COVID-19, what exactly it was how to save yourself from the pandemic and how to use those sanitizers. So this empathy it was not there before. How did it come? During a crisis, my, my words, that during a crisis, we Indians pressure keep that unified posture even after it ends. So after inclusivity, we say uh, oh, opportunity. We have to find out the best of the opportunities in order to take India forward. And the best of the opportunities that have come up recently in terms of digital payments, in terms of telemedicine, even hospitals and doctors, we don't have to visit. We had got say, telehealth services available in which we could have talked to the concerned doctors and hospitals and taken say help from them in terms of any problems which we are having. Even normal uh, say problems were mitigated. People didn't even go to the doctors. They took say medicines at home. Even those immunity medicines like Ayurveda and uh, homeopathic medicines came to the fore. Now, last is universalism. A-E-I-O-U. Prime Minister Modi meant to say that uh, we cannot ever remain as isolated islands of excellence in the world. We have to take the globe as one and not only the globe as one, but whatever work we are doing, we have to take that as one. Now, ag again giving you a small example, I'm not just saying what we have done, but uh, I have to give an example. So at IEC University, what we did was uh, we collaborated with some private universities. Believe me, people don't believe me when I say this. Say three or four 
private universities and we started sharing resources. If somebody had a very good video on a particular topic, a very good faculty member, we requested him to come online and teach our students. Even I, as a man of management, taught to one of the classes in a, uh, another university. So sharing of resources has to be there. We have to take the world as one. We cannot remain isolated in one area, in one um, thought process. And isolation is never physically, never geographically. It is in the mind. Uh, last, I'll give an example of Martina Navratilova, which is very, which is scaling on a WhatsApp right now. Uh, what has happened was when she was 43 and she was a champion, somebody asked her, Ki, how could you do it at this age? You know the answer? She said, it is not the playground which is important. The playground is between the two years. It's a six inch wide playground where we always play games. So we mm -hmm. have to be positive there. Age is of no matter. That is all I have to say. I wish all the students who are attending this and all the other audience who are attending the webinar best wishes. I hope they would grow and we would take India forward together. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, sir, for your valuable words. Thank you, sir, for sharing us the ways how can we change the challenges into opportunities in the form of entrepreneurship and other ideas also. Thank you, sir, for your motivational words. Now, it's our privilege that we have amongst us Today, Dr. W. C. Singh, who is presently working as Registrar, Manipur University. He has done PhD from Manipur University. He is Professor of Management in Manipur Institute of Management Studies. He has contributed extensively in teaching, training and research. The VSA family warmly welcomes you, sir. So the platform is yours. Welcome, Singh, sir. Thank you, madam. In fact, uh, you, I'm really happy. Career prospects, challenges, and skills needed for students admitted and post COVID 19, which is organized by Dr. Virendra Sarov Institute of Computer Science. In fact, him itself is really very, very relevant on today's date. At the very outset, respected chief guest, Professor Sarendra Kulkarni, higher education advisor, government of Nagaland. Professor Abhay Kumar, Vice Chancellor, IEC University, Himachal Pradesh. Dr. Muhammad Anis, Lucknow University. My friend, Dr. Dr. Sandeep Sandilia. And convener, Sweta Sukla, and co convener, Ranu Ch uh, Chauve. And I, was, and I wish all of you a very good morning at the very outset. Good morning, sir. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm really thankful to uh, the organizing committee for associating me in this uh, August gathering uh, as one of the speakers. And I'm really thankful to all of you. Uh, in fact, I would like to uh, present in three basic areas. One, we talk about, say, uh, prospects. Another one is challenges. Third aspect is all about the skill, which uh, we talk about very clear, clearly in the what we call as the theme of the uh, webinar seminar also. And this is really very, very good. In fact, each and every student enrolled today for higher education has well-defined uh, career paths by the time they took admission in the universities and higher education institutions. Now, all of them wanted to become say, something by the time they, they graduated from the university or its institution. But suddenly, a lot many challenges emerge during this period of time. And the challenges which are basically brought by this pandemic COVID-19. And the whole world is struggling to see how to come out from this COVID-19 and this pandemic situation. The same happens in India, higher education institutions and the UGC and the Ministry of HRD and all the step say, uh, higher education institutions are still struggling a lot. There are a large number of these challenges, which see, I look to that. One of the very important challenges, say, uh, something like reintroducing a system or reinforcing a system, in fact, reinforcing a system say, or say, approach, which we basically do not work well earlier. In terms of, say, suppose, 
have various issues related to how to reach the students through the online education. And that itself was one of the greatest challenges. And not only these challenges, another is a very important challenge which we have come across is how to maintain this uh, equity. And a huge equity gap is there. Some states are in a very, very far flung areas. Students are not in a position to access the digital media. And some are so say, well thorough so with that. Some people can have this uh, uh, facilities and some people can easily have these facilities. And how to, how to make education say, available and accessible by all, this has become another big challenge which so we are facing at present. The second, the third is a very important say, issue is say, who will and how will we monitor it? Whether the students and the people are accessible to it and they are say, really say, coping up with the system and whether say, they are facing say, problems and troubles, who is going say, to monitor it? The monitoring itself and the monitoring mechanism, the agencies out there say, for monitoring all these things are not strong enough today. And we need say, to say things is very well on this say, perspective also. The career graph and the career perspective and the, the expectations, the aim the students have set on one side. So on the other hand, because of the sudden emergence of this pandemic situation, no one is unprepared. And the disaster management cell, say, they may be prepared all about the outbreak of say, uh, what we call as say, fire and uh, this uh, earthquake and other say, natural calamities and a tsunami. But such sort of say, pandemic is highly unpredictable and it doesn't say happen say, uh, just like what we have seen in our lifetime, the tsunami and storms and other uh, say, natural calamities. It's very uncommon pandemic that emerged after say, uh, so many say, years. Okay, we talk about this French influenza and uh, Spanish say, influenza and all, and that had happened see, long, long ago, and nobody say, has a memory about all these things. But in this is a very critical say, moment of time, okay, how we are going see, to cope up with such situation and how are we going see, to address the expectations of the say, students in terms of say, setting see, their own career. So that is see, one aspect. The another see, challenge is say how to maintain balance. When you talk about it from the perspective of the higher education institution, how will we maintain balance in terms of diversity, equity, and we, we talk about see, inclusiveness. The concept of see, diversity and maintaining it will become see, very difficult, very, very difficult now. And the maintaining equity, maintaining diversity. And the, the concept of the inclusiveness, which say generally higher education institutions are talking today, as per the expectations of NAC and the NRF ranking, which has become one of the very important support parameter. How are we going to address such, uh, such, such sort of such challenge? This is again say, uh, one aspect of challenge. Again, we talk about say, suppose uh, another challenge which we have come across these days quite frequently in terms of what we call as say, discrimination. Okay, sense of discrimination that students and the people are say, feeling. Okay, so some people say who wants to study outside and some people who goes to some other higher education institutions. Okay, and uh, some are say, say COVID positive and some are not say, COVID positive. And so a lot of say, discriminatory say, uh, mindset has emerged. In Manipur itself, I'm telling you as an example, once one of the say, uh, students say, uh, uh, hanged herself and uh, commit suicide. Because he had, she had a social stigma, like she, she is a COVID person and the family will not entertain her and her friends in the institutions will not say, entertain her. The, the locality and the locality is trying say, to say, uh, avoid from herself. And so that sort of say, discriminatory mindset is again she emerged to a great extent say, uh, in various parts of the country and uh, throughout the world. If you're coming from China, then say, uh, we should not say, entertain him or her. And if you're coming say, from this part of that place, then say, he or she will not be able say, to access this sort of facility. 
So another secret challenge is all about this, how to remove this discriminatory set of mindset from among. And this is again, another say, very important. Then another say important challenge among the challenges is all about this graduate outcomes. When we say graduate outcomes, we talk about past percentage, we talk about the placement of the students, okay, and the, the, the kind of skills they're expecting say, for that. And all these say, uh, uh, challenges are again emerging. So what will be the past percentage? How will we conduct examination? That itself is another say, big say, uh, area which we need to think and address very well. Then on the other hand, we talk about the placement of the students. If the placement is good, then institution is doing good. And if the placement is not good, if the placement is uh, institution is not doing well. That sort of same ideas and feeling is with us. So how will we maintain the compatible, say, graded outcome is a parameter, which is, is basically is expected by all, all other higher education institutions. Another secret challenge. Then one more challenge, which I would like you to highlight here, is something like say the decline in the industrial sector, all about demand for say, say manpower. So we said that on one sector, the demand is increasing, and on but in general in maximum number of industrial units, okay, the demand for the manpower is declining say, uh, because of this COVID-19 issue. Then if the demand for the manpower is declining say, drastically, then how are we going to place the students which are passing out from the higher education institution? That itself is one of the say, major challenges which say, we all are say, uh, uh, having is at present. Then we can include in this among these challenges the digital divide, which see, we find uh, throughout the world. Some and within India also, the digital divide is so huge in the northeastern part of India and in the say, extreme say, northern part of India and in the, the middle and central part of India and the southern part of India and eastern part of India. If we measure see, this, say, uh, uh, the facilities available, then see, there are it's a huge gap in terms of this digital divide. This is okay, some of the say, uh, great challenges which see, we feel. But at the same time, there are prospects also. One of the important see, prospect out here is to say, uh, because of this pandemic situation, we came to know that the, what is the volume of the say, important e-resources which our say, country is having at present. Okay, now Infinite has coming up Say with this huge say, uh, uh, marketing and uh, implementation of their e-resources, which they have documented so far. Other universities in India and colleges in India, they have developed e-resources to a huge extent. And these e-resources can be accessible and utilized by the students and the faculty members throughout the world. Earlier, these e-resources were not known much by the people and forget about the students, even you see the learned faculty members working in different institutions of India are not able to understand the value of the e resources. So the building these e resources and um, say, producing these e resources and uh, making it aware, this is again one of the great prospects which say, well, we have said present. So if one of us you see, can build more number of produce more number of e resources and that is highly say, uh, uh, demanded, which is highly demanded because of this COVID-19 and its pandemic issues. Then another see, prospect is the chances of see, collaboration and working together among faculty members throughout the world. That has see, come up to a see, huge scale. The third see, very important see, prospect uh, out here is advantage out of here, uh, out here is uh, something like the students are in a position to access the quality e-resources, which are say basically produced from different great institutions of the world. Because of this pandemic situation, the large number of say, health education institutions, they have started say, posting it to their say, say, websites and sharing it uh, through various platform. And our students and uh, the people in India also are in a position to access this quality e-resources and the material, which was you see for the last uh, for the last many years it didn't say within their own institution and uh, with the faculty members. 
then coming together across boundaries, which say Professor uh, uh, Avestar has also say, mentioned say, very say, clearly. And this is again say, one of the say, very important say, prospects. And we have built one such a strong say, say, relationship that can say, work together across boundaries. Not only see, say, with the uh, faculty members across boundaries, all students and the scholars that are also so well integrated today with various other say, scholars working in different parts of the world. And that is say, one very important say, uh, prospect. And here, all of us say, could explore say, online resources available, the volume of resources, and uh, say, all these say, benefits, we, we are say, in a position to explore it. Regarding the skill concept, regarding the skill aspect, well, of course, uh, skills which are specifically imparted and imbibed by sitting together in the classroom and working together and uh, say, attending classes and face-to-face -face interaction is something which is really unique for uh, building and strengthening and enhancing the skill. But as you see, we are not see, in a position to do that. Okay, at the same time, Professor Ave has also explain you see, very well you see, what should be there in the skills and the how to how to imbibe see, that skill and enhance that skill and that is really see, something which I basically don't want to repeat but I would like see, to say highlight on two say, uh, key areas one is when you talk about see, education education is imparting one is knowledge the other aspect which is imparting out here is the skills the third is a very important see, component which we impart uh, say, through higher education institutions or otherwise in general educational institutions is all about the attitudes and habits. All these three things are supposed to impart to the students simultaneously. Otherwise, the, the student, when they are graduating from the institution, they will not have the sufficient, say, uh, what to say, uh, you know, personality. Okay. So all these things are see, equally important. When you talk about the social skill, is social skill is not in a position to impart from the say, higher education institutions by face-to-face -face interaction and uh, so working together, then how will we do and how will we impart that this sort of skill is something which we need to say, uh, bother. Here in my institution, what we have done, I, I'm just sharing see, my own, say, uh, the experience from the institutions where they are working. We have say adopted a series of say, villages in and around the university and in a very, very say, far off say uh, rural areas and interior hilly areas of Manipur. Then we make see different groups and teams. And these groups of say, students and a team led by one faculty coordinator is sent for say for dialogue with the say, villages for uh, conducting COVID awareness say, program and a uh, lot many other say, negotiations and understanding each other. And uh, one very important say, component to skill, which is basically say, demanded by the students as imparted through that say, sort of say, uh, initiative which we have taken up. Manipur University, in fact, has taken up huge number of say, COVID-19 awareness programs in different say, villages of Manipur and even at the remote, remotest area of say, Manipur. That is what is, we have done. And uh, the students have been given see, lots of assignments. They are conducting the research. And uh, through that, the concept of see, social skill, okay, which is basically say, necessary when say, they graduate from the institution, is imparted okay, through such means. Because okay, imparting such types of social skill by working and by attending classes and interacting with the, the faculty members and among students within the institution is restricted because of that. And so on other side, how this can be done? This is what we have uh, taken up. Then the, uh, the other aspects, the, uh, these, uh, what we call as the visual learning, then so observational learning, the uh, personal interaction and exposure to the industrial sector, and that part is basically frustrated okay, uh, up to now. And uh, those students who are see, enrolled to the professional programs, they are supposed to go for the internship program. They have to experience by themselves how the industry functions, okay, and the way they physically visit and uh, interact with them and uh, get the exposure from these industrial units. That is see, missing, and uh, but how 
so we are going to say to say bridge see, this gap okay and this this part so we need see, to address this very well uh, at present but we have started see, sending small small see, teams and groups to industrial units and uh, so start so conducting see, this training program and attending say, sessions with the industry expert and uh, such initiatives we have say, uh, taken up. So the peer learning, then dialogue, negotiation, and uh, the observation and experiential learning, this is very much is a required okay, as a part of the skill for the say, students when they graduated. Okay, that part we need to, to breeze very well. Okay, so people and uh, students who are graduated and who are uh, enrolled in the uh, traditional programs like history, political science, okay, Manipuri literature and English literature and education, such types of students are basically used for conducting COVID awareness program. So that dream case has been met and the concepts of dialogue and negotiation and interacting with people, okay, that is somehow to fulfill the other way around. Since, since these things are not basically addressed from the platform of the institution itself, from the classroom itself. And that is so what so we need so to think by other so, uh, uh, institutions also. And UGC is also so talking all about adopting uh, such type of so villages. Then we talk about the UGC's various schemes, Unad Bharat Abhiyan and Ek Bharat, Shrestha Bharat. And through that schemes, we can introduce many more of such sort of interactive programs. And through that, the one part of the skill which is basically demanded by the students for getting employment and for getting themselves connected to the say, rural masses and the grassroots and uh, working with people and that skill so may be able to, to say, inculcate in, in the course of time. And uh, like this, say, uh, we can think of on say, various perspectives. And in fact, here say, I have uh, uh, shared with you uh, what are the challenges which institutions are facing? Okay, and uh, because of this COVID-19, what are the prospects that say, uh, have built up within us and among us in the society? And uh, uh, it has also improved say, uh, our mindset of something like say, readiness for uh, any sort of say, unwanted say, and uh, epidemic situations in future. And uh, this particular see, epidemic and the pandemic situation will uh, give us a say, great lesson throughout the world. If something has gone wrong suddenly, how to how to act and how to react. Okay, and all these things uh, say, have uh, become a very great experience. The other part which I have touched upon is briefly a little bit of a few additions which uh, Professor uh, Abhay Kumar has, uh, has uh, already explained all about uh, skill points and the skill building and the skill initiatives. And with this, see, I, I would like to conclude uh, my brief uh, interaction with all of you. And it's really very nice uh, to see uh, the great faces. Okay, Abhay Kumar sir, uh, the working in Himachal Pradesh as Vice Chancellor, I would basically see, love to visit your university soon after the lockdown is over. My old friend, see, Sandeep Sandilia, we haven't say, uh, uh, met for the last almost see, 22, 23 years. And I'm very keen to meet him again in Aliga. And uh, Professor Mahmoud Anis, we have uh, interacted a uh, few times uh, uh, through other means, but face to face, so we are able to see today. But in future, so we will definitely meet again uh, personally and we'll interact on a lot many other platforms in the course of time. I'm so thankful to the organizer uh, for giving me this opportunity and we'll keep in touch with all of you. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you very much, sir, for providing us insight of challenges, prospectus and skills needed for students. I want to thank you, sir, uh, on behalf of VACF family. We are delighted to have the gracious presence of Dr. Mohammed Anis, our guest speaker, who is senior assistant professor at Lucknow University and Dr. Sandeep Shandele, Director Academic Banjara. It's a great honor for all of us to welcome our guest speaker, Dr. Mohammed Anis. He's having more than 22 years of experience of teaching and research. 
He is PhD in Banking, Economics and Finance from Bundelkhand University. He has been formerly MBA FC Program Director in Lucknow University. So without wasting much time, I would like to welcome Dr. Anis. Welcome, sir. Okay. Uh, hello, all of you. I am Dr. Mohammad Anish. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Perfectly audible. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, respected chief, Professor Saleh Kulkarni, Professor Kumar, keynote speaker, Dr. W. C. Singh, special theme speaker, Dr. Sandeep Shandilya. Organizers, convener, Dr. Shweta Shukla, coordinator, Dr. Ranu Chaube, dear participants from industry and academics. Today, I am honored to express my views on the very contemporary topic, career prospects, challenges and skills needed amid and post COVID-19 pandemic. Of this webinar, organized by, under the banner of Dr. Virendra Sarut, Institute of Computer Studies, Kanpo. Uh, I am happy to express my views. First of all, I would talk about challenges that presently we are amid COVID-19 pandemic, a period of unlocking after a considerably long period of lockdown, we are still in a period of COVID-19 because increasing number of cases are being reported daily. This stage of COVID-19 pandemic has to continue till the antidote comes or herd immunity is developed. Among the public, that may take from one month, minimum month to a year, expectedly. There are two types of challenges we need to deal with. Challenges till the coronavirus is active and the post-COVID-19 challenges. First type of challenges are more urgent because precaution is better than cure. For this purpose, the immediate responsibility before us is to follow social distancing and not social isolation, of course. We have to promote sanitization efforts as much as possible and safety and healthcare practices such as healthy food and exercise so as to increase the body immunity of all of us. Post COVID-19 challenges are long term in nature. Some of these challenges are significant reduction in the mobility of HR, economic recession and rise in inflation, significant shift in customers' demand and preferences for industries, the revival of market, demand and regain customers' confidence is a big challenge. Liquidity and cash problems would be prevalent in the industry some strategic challenges post COVID-19 would be adoption of new technology, virtual team, teamwork, advanced computers, network technology, digitalization of products and services in a faster pace. Routine job would replace with creativity. Job prospects and skills that are needed some, it has been rightly said that opportunity lies in challenges. So with this quotation, immediate job prospects look to be very limited due to lockdown and quarantine, change customer references, temporary halt in many sectors such as hospitality, tourism, automobiles and education sector. Economic recession and slowdown in post COVID era, all of the sectors would offer equal opportunities. 
this is a very temporary phase which is going on in which the opportunities are looking very uh, very limited or we are developing a sense of pessimism in us but that will not continue all of we have to be have have to be very optimistic about our future placements especially for students a lot of opportunities are waiting post covid 19 so all the sectors would offer equal opportunities but the conventional business model will replace with changed model which will consist of data scientists fluent virtual meetings building and nurturing customer relation building team cohesion and innovation more creativity in business processes products and services would be the requirement in the post covid 19 pandemic this is not the first time in business and economic scenario they are looking difficult early 2008 there was crisis known as lay down crisis lehman crisis or economic uh, or financial crisis led to global recession downsizing of companies and job cuts at that time the things were also looking very difficult same situation is also revealed right now earlier earlier to that there was a great global depression in 930 the gdp was the gdp of all the countries was badly affected very soon the global economy including india will all overcome covid 19 pandemic in india itself we have a large domestic career potential uh within india we have a large domestic career potential a lot of opportunities a lot of placements uh, would be waiting very soon government is trying its level best to reju to rejuvenate local market this is the best time to explore jobs both in private as well as in public sector you can initiate your own business ventures the students and prospective job seekers it is a advice for them that they can go to initiate their own business ventures as happening in china that the production is is galloping over there we also have to develop the same model over here in india other skill set which are urgently needed in a uh, recruitable rr our creativity for new business model talents to deal with e-commerce activities good communication skills for team building and customer relation adoption of virtual study and meeting sessions self directed learning would be the preference uh, in the post covid 19 pandemic a number of avenues are open for new recruits such as government and non profit organizations healthcare sector biotech and pharma companies business and service sector technology companies teleworking and communication companies online retail grocery and education sector a lot of opportunities are there in these sectors in short for a job search you need to be you need to first be willing to move with the required skill set towards the area of your choice jobs are plenty only interested persons or takers are required jack ma jack ma of alibaba group has rightly said don't try to be the best but try to be the first that approach will make you successful if you are taking initiative if you are believing in that the uh, opportunity lies in challenge and you accept the challenge with the slightly changed business scenario and you adapt yourself accordingly you will you will find that a lot of opportunities are there in each and every sector so presently there are limited opportunities available but that time is only from one month to may as long as one month. and within this time also you can you can engage your also productively productively and you can earn your livelihood and after that covid 19 pandemic a lot of opportunities are waiting domestically and in other global markets and if you are 
complaining for non availability of jobs it means that you have put a number of limitations on your job choices if you are flexible and willing jobs are waiting for you so there is a no scarcity of sir ki awaaz nahi aa rahi sorry for the interruption uh, uh, with this approach all the potential uh, uh, candidates students from any field from management from computers from engineers from any background they can go and have a best uh, and can have the opportunity of placement of according to their choice with these words i thank you for giving me an opportunity to, to speak and to express my views thank you all thank you sir for sharing this valuable piece of knowledge with us now i am pleased to have the opportunity to introduce our next speaker dr sandeep shandilya with phd in two subjects phd in commerce from jamia millia islamia new delhi and phd in economics from agra university he is ugc net qualified in six different subjects he is founder general secretary of north eastern management association nima aside from his talent and advocacy he is also a good poet and writer vsa fraternity warmly welcomes you sir uh, thank you very much uh, sir are you listening me yes sir okay okay let me make one correction madam yes sir i am not the secretary of nima <laughs> i am not the secretary of nima okay nima but my friend professor w c singh is of course <laughs> so This is one of the corrections. And uh, first I'm of all, my heart feels thanks sir. to you. Uh, <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, there is nothing wrong. He is just like my brother. Whatever he is, I am. I am also the same. <laughs> so this is just an honor we have done. Okay. So uh, first of all, let me thank Dr. Anu Chowe, once my learned colleague at uh, one of the universities in the, at Aligarh, and uh, she was a dynamic colleague at the same reflector here. and she could manage five uh, learned professors all around from the country including me and this also means a lot this mobilization of resources of uh, that caliber uh, let me thank my two of my seniors with whom i worked at uh, one of the private universities at aligarh professor sn kulkarni uh, who is uh, the youngest vice chancellor this country has ever seen and the most versatile vice chancellor perhaps this country has ever seen uh, my Uh, director of the institute uh, 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 professor abhay uh, he was with me as my senior for 6 years i learned so many things with these two uh, gentlemen my seniors and professor kulgandhi was uh, was not here i think he was not listening to me when i when i said that sir you are the finest and the brightest and the youngest and the most versatile vice chancellor and i am fortunate that you were the first vice chancellor and <laughs> with whom i worked So I, I still cherish those. I still I still cherish those memories a lot. Even uh, I do. Thank special, you. Uh, my special thanks to two of my friends, and they are friends in different categories. Professor W. C. Singh, with whom I started my teaching career way back in 1996. We still cherish those days. Uh, the first institute was opened in Aligarh, Azhar Institute of Agro Management, and this gentleman from North India, uh, North Northeast. Uh, was here and taking classes and living in a small room and now he is the registrar of Central Reputed Industry in Manipur. He he is he thoroughly represents the gentleness and the South India. My 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 cl close friend, uh, my class fellow, uh, Muhammad Anis, with whom you are just listening, uh, we we spent the time as class. Discussions are still going on. We keep on uh, discussing the things. Okay, so I have uh, I have. Uh, divided my lecture into two parts, and these two parts are again having two parts, so you can say four parts. Okay, in the topic, I have to deliver a special theme talk. Just on a light note, I am sharing one interesting incident. One of my students asked, "Why, sir, every time a special theme talk only? Uh, why, what is so special about it?" I said two things. Uh, one, there is a special attached to it, uh, and <laughs> this is just on a light note. And another, the conceptual thing is that then I have a liberty to take every nook and corner of the topic. 
and, and to highlight the hidden aspects if I'm uh, uh, delivering a special theme talk. So as I said that I will dividing it into two parts. The first part will be of course the students because it is the students the central focus here, the students career perspective. And this I will divide again into two parts, long term and short term. First of all, let me take, uh, talk about the career perspectives in short term. In short term case, I will consider that the time for which this, uh, this pandemic will live and six months to one year thereafter. So, okay, my dear students, I will suggest you the entire world has now become a laboratory, a kind of laboratory where you can exercise patience, where you can exercise stress management. This is wonderful uh, setup this nature or this untimely pandemic has provided to us. This is something short time you can review uh, this is a kind of break you are getting from your regular studies. You can, uh, you can just uh, review that what you have to do in the future. You can revise your courses and uh, so many things uh, you can do uh, during this time. Uh, you can uh, go for the MOOC, uh, the innovative uh, uh, the, the initiatives by in the, this uh, UGC. You can uh, per, uh, pursue certain books and can get the certificates. You can uh, pursue certain value added courses uh, this time and, and of course you can talk to your friends uh, with whom you have not talked for a long time and uh, and I will say that stress management and patience is something which can be mastered in the, during this time. Uh, when you are young uh, there are so many uh, so many colors and you, 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 you love to go outside but then you are trapped within your rooms with your homes so this is this is the perfect time to bring the scent out of you outside. Uh, okay, so this, these are something uh, in short-term uh, perspective, which I um, can, we can learn uh, these kind of skills in this, uh, 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 during this pandemic, uh, which is uh, uh, on surface, it looks troubles. So, and we, as a student, we as a learners, we must take care of the advantages first and leave the disadvantages aside. Okay. Now I'm coming to the sub serious aspects, long-term aspects I'm talking about. Uh, this what I'm going to say, I'm going to say to UGC also, and going to say my country and the entire world also. Two things are coming is specifically outside of, uh, out of this pandemic. One is that environmental conservation, you have to take care. Second is disaster management, okay. So I will suggest you, uh, my dear students, that in future, if you want to become professional, be you, be a doctor, be engineer, be lawyer, be manager, these two orientations will fetch you good jobs. In fact, these are the things which were uh, being noticed by UGC and everyone. But I think uh, I, I'm sorry to say that only lip service was being uh, done to these things in the past. But now onwards, these issues will need, uh, need very, very ser serious issue, a uh, serious, uh, uh, you can say, inclination and concentration and focus by all of us. And you as the, as the students, I will suggest you that you orient yourself around these two things and, and, and learn to love your environment and learn to, to learn the skills that are and so. And this, of course, has something to do, a lot to do with the environment also. The origin, as it is said, that is from China, and because of the, so we can see that that environment is, of course, the central issue, uh, which is behind the pandemic. So I will suggest you to to learn these skills, and uh, pursue certain courses, and have your orientation around this, because when you will face interview in the future, these two things will be tested directly or indirectly, for sure. So 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 keep it in mind. Okay. So these were the certain things uh, which I wanted to suggest to uh, to students. Uh, uh, they can uh, uh, pursue certain uh, short-term goals. They can pursue certain uh, long-term goals. But uh, the must uh, their their love towards environment uh, must be there. Which will take them to good good jobs uh, directly or indirectly. This is my suggestion. Uh, here I can just give the suggestions. But when I move to the second part of my lecture, then they will become into the policy making kind of things. So you as a student, you cannot decide uh, the policy. And you can, uh, you can tell that these are the things we 
that we foresee in the future. So same work I'm doing for you as an expert. I am speaking as a student. I am speaking as your representative that we need these two focus in the future, the disaster management and environment. Now, quickly, quickly, uh, I'm 10 minutes are assigned, but uh, so many things to say. Uh, please forgive me if I take a few minutes uh, uh, more. I'm going, coming to the second part of uh, my lecture. This is now with respect to higher educational institutions and their management with regards to whatever the topic is. Now, here, as I said that, things will, may overlap, but here, this will be the policy making which will come, come uh, into focus. Short term uh, policy making as far as the higher institution uh, are concerned. Of course, uh, Dr. Virin Swirupi is one of the higher educational institutions uh, who has organized this webinar. I will suggest you two, two things like, like MOOC is the, is the one thing which I suggested for students. I will suggest your institute and indirectly I will suggest uh, the institutes all across the country that uh, they, they they prepare their faculty for guiding these students for a small book, multiple open online courses by UGC. Uh, well, one thing that they uh, first of all they ask the preferences of the students and then match the skills of their, of their faculty who can guide them for those books. And these are variable certificates they can get from there. One very interesting innovative idea. There is uh, one concept choice based credit system which is a kind of innovative step uh, UGC has taken. I foresee some very interesting uh, aspects uh, of this uh, uh, relating to the pandemic. What happens in the choice-based credit system, that, if, that suppose there is a student who is pursuing BSc physics and he wants to learn guitar, he can learn. Now, what, uh, what we can do that is during this pandemic, we must promote these credits online. It will serve dual purpose. If a student who is a traditional physics science student is learning guitar, it will serve as to reduce the stress during pandemic. And moreover, he will earn the credit uh, of this uh, choice-based credit system. So this can, uh, this innovative idea of UGC can be fit uh, like this. Uh, these kind of interesting courses, which are uh, not traditionally uh, linked to, to their traditional uh, line of studies like physics. Someone is a core physics student, chemistry, or biology, economics, and they have certain uh, other areas of interest. So they can be fit here. And they will learn some extraordinary skills and, uh, on one hand, and they will, uh, they will be overcoming the stress because of pandemic, because they are being trapped uh, in their homes for a long time. No doubt it is now open, but it's still the fears are there, and you will find the open road, the, the, there is very less uh, uh, traffic on the roads. I happen to go outside. Um, uh, I think two days before, so I was finding that my, my illegal city is not as crowded uh, as far as the traffic is concerned because of this pandemic. Okay, uh, one thing let me make clear, when I was sitting, uh, Ranu Madam called me that, sir, it is appearing as if you are sleeping. I have a problem that I can speak only in a sitting position. I have my hip joint uh, broken, so when I, when I sit down, it appears as if I'm, I'm just lying on the bed. So I wanted to make it clear with due respect to all those who are seeing me, uh, that, that is not my habit. This is just an accident which is making me to look like that. So this was something short term they can do. The long term is again the same, two things. Uh, long term, to all the institutes, please make up your mind. Of course, UGC is their backing. Environment and disaster were in offering by UGC already in the past, but I said, I just said you, these were just lip service being uh, done to these things now, but they now need very serious commitment now onwards. Thank you. Uh, you just see, the world is passing through emergency. China, sometimes we, we, we see that China will attack or we will attack with China. And these, uh, some pandemic, some wars and this and that, all kinds of chaos we are living in. So we don't know when the, the, the event will again come to surface that we will have to resort to online kind of, uh, of, of teaching. So, uh, and the, uh, the, these, uh, the disasters can be in any form. Now at present it is in the pandemic form, it can be there are so many forms. Uh, we, we as human beings are very, uh, very much, uh, you can expert in, uh, in creating these kind of situations which are havoc to everyone. Uh, across the board. So anytime this can happen, so disaster and environment must be there in your uh, in your itinerary on the top, uh, which you have to offer with sincerity. Uh, you can uh, uh, you can have full fledged courses 
uh, I am so rigid in that. Is just okay. I'm, I'm uh, recalling one uh, one thing which I wanted to share with you. Way back in uh, Aligarh at Aligarh Muslim University, in one of the international conferences organized by Geography Department, I presented a paper. The title will speak volumes. I am just uh, giving the title of the paper. The title of the paper was Developmental Economics Requires Environmental Review. Now at this time, this is becoming so much contextual. I'm quoting here one very interesting thing. In 1972, four scientists from MIT conducted a study. And the name of the study was Limits to Growth. And that was regarding environmental issues. I'm just telling you the name. And the same the scientist, three out of those four, conducted again after 22 years in 1994. And now what they named their study, they named it Beyond the Limit. I think you have the answer. In 1972, there was limit to growth, but in 1994, we have done so much harm to the environment. Now it is beyond the limit and the limit has been crossed and we are, we are uh, these kind of pandemic was very well in offing according to these experts. So, so you can just see that I just named the, the, the nomenclature of these studies and this even itself is speaking a lot that what havoc we have done to the environment. I am so rigid in uh, on these issues that if I happen to be the chairman of UGC, I will became, uh, make it compulsory that at least one unit in every syllabus must be on syllabus, uh, must be on environment relating all the contents of the syllabus with, uh, 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 with respect to in, in the context of environment. Any study whatsoever is, is incomplete without environment being in the focus. Be it physics, be it chemistry, be it atom bomb, Everything whatsoever, be it economics, be it sociology. Environment has to be institutes and that has to be the long-term perspective of the uh, of the career of institutes. So uh, the, these were certain things uh, which I wanted to suggest. Uh, these are the kind of macro kind of suggestions. There can be so many permutations, combinations that we see into the micro level. Uh, मैं अब जो है अपने संवाद को जरा यह खत्म करना चाहता हूं और एक मेरी आदत है कि जब भी एक बड़ी अच्छी शुरुआत देखता हूं और खास तौर से जहां यंग स्टूडेंट्स रानू चूबे इज क्वाइट यंग फेलो एंड उसके साथ हमने काफी बहुत बात चीजें सीखी उसने कुछ हमने हमको सिखाया कुछ हमने कुछ उसने हमको सिखाया तो दो दो लाइनें मैं बोल देता हूं अक्सर दो तीन बार और भी कहीं मैंने पढ़ी हैं ये आपके विरोध स्वरूप के लिए मैं बोल रहा हूं कि बात है बरसों पुरानी बगैर बात है बरसों पुरानी बगैर आज भी नई सी लगती है मेरी मंजिल मुझे पहले कदम की निशानी लगती है आई थिंक ये आपका पहला प्रयास था और एक जब मंजिल पे होंगे तो आप याद करेंगे कि एक सतत एक कंटिन्यूटी है जिसमें कर गए दो लाइने आपके बच्चों के लिए भी मैं बोलता चलू जो आपके यहाँ के बच्चे हैं बड़े सीरियसली सुन रहे हैं मुझे बताया गया था ये हजारों स्टूडेंट थे जो यहाँ पर ऑनलाइन है इस वक्त कि सितारों की तरफ है आसमा मैंने कभी देखा ही नहीं ये आपके इंस्टीट्यूट का एक छात्र कह रहा है सितारों की तरफ है आसमा मैंने कभी देखा ही नहीं मेरी शबक इन सखम है ये ख्याल कभी आया ही नहीं सो यू सो ब्राइट यू आर यू आर ऑल can of of course grace you if they want to do so so thank you very much uh, i hope i could do just uh, some justice to to whatever task was assigned to me and and uh, it's a great and historical day for me because two of my seniors were were observing me they observed me uh, decades back they observe me now they, they can judge where i have reached is all because of their blessings and the guidance thank you very much thank you Jai sir Hind. Jai Hind, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your motivational words and drawing our attention towards environment and nature. If one takes a closer look at the alchemy of the achieving person, two distinct virtues pop up. Besides perseverance and hard work, these are pioneering spirit and willingness. VSA fraternity feel greatly honored in expressing the gratitude. Your invaluable guidance will be cherished by all of us. I want to thank our chief guest, Professor S. N. Kulkarni, Dr. Abhay Kumar, our keynote speaker, Dr. W. C. Singh, and our guest speakers, Dr. Anis and Dr. 
uh, theme talk by Dr. Sandeep Shandile for taking their precious time out. Thank you, sir, for sharing your words of wisdom. Last but not the least, I thank all the viewers for showing their interest and involvement in the webinar. I once again thank everyone on the behalf of Virain Saroop Institute of Computer Studies for making this event successful. Thank you.